How does a rider go from being a double reigning world champion celebrated by fans to the verge of almost being forgotten in the ever evolving world of professional cycling? The journey of Julien Philippe, a name once synonymous with success and panache on the road, provides a fascinating narrative of the highs, lows, and the constant pursuit of excellence in the sport. Julien Philippe's story begins on the 11th of June, 1992, when he was born in Saint Armand Montron. Philippe showed promise in cyclocross and as a junior he managed to win the Solder Junior World Cup round as well and he placed second in the Junior World Championships losing out to the local Thomas Pabriska. Alaphilippe continued the cyclocross journey with key results in 2011 winning the under 23 national championships and managing to finish third overall in the Junior World Cup standings. 2012 proved to be a decisive year for Alaphilippe as he also committed to the road where he found success at the Canadian race the Cup de Nationville Saguenay, winning a stage and finishing second to a field that was filled with many future World Tour pros. And in the cyclocross season, Alaphilippe finished third in the European Championships. Surprisingly, Alaphilippe didn't receive any offers from French teams, so he turned pro in 2013 with the continental team Etix IHNED as a development team for the World Tour team of Mega Pharma Quickstep. And at this point, he made the decision to focus entirely on road cycling, and it wasn't long before he tested success, as on the fourth stage of the Tour de Bretagne, he took a stage win, and on top of that, even the third stage of a German stage race. Alain Philippe thereafter went to the Tour de l'Avenir. Here he managed to take a stage win and won the points classification overall. He was selected for the Under-23 World Championships in Florence and he managed to launch in the crucial moments of the race an early attack and ended up leading the Tuscan Championships in Florence, which was a perfect fit for his style. But Matej Morhej, the eventual winner, joined him and then left him behind and ultimately Alain Philippe finished in ninth place. 2014 saw Alaphilippe joined Omega Pharma quick step outright. Alaphilippe was sent to many races in his Neo Pro season, but his first breakthrough came at the Tour de Lan, where he managed to finish second on the opening prologue and he won the final stage after gaining a gap and won in front of Dan Martin, which meant that he also won the points classification. The GP Plouet was the next good result for Alaphilippe as he was able to feature in the pointy end and finished fifth. In 2015, he went to his first Vuelta Catalunya and he almost won the sixth stage of Catalunya as well before he finished seventh in the Amstel Gold Race, which was won by his teammate Mikhail Piokowski. A few days later, at Flesh Vallon, on the final ascent of the Mura Hui, Alaphilippe finished surprisingly second behind the veteran and maestro of the race, Alejandro Valverde, and Alaphilippe even managed to complete his debut of the three races at Liege Pastel Liege, where he once again finished second only to Valverde and this was actually the best French performance on La Doyenne since Laurent Jalabert in 1998. Alaphilippe went on to participate in the Tour de Romedy thereafter finishing on the podium on two stages and the next challenge for the youngster was the Tour of California and here Alaphilippe managed to finish third in San Jose before another third place in the time trial and then he went on to win the Queen stage of that year's Tour of California as well which concluded on the top of Mount Baldy. Despite that, behind him, the leader, Peter Sagan, managed to just about stay within Alaphilippe in the GC. So it came down to a dramatic conclusion in the race and Peter Sagan managed to get enough bonus points at the intermediate sprint. And in the final, despite Alaphilippe's teammate winning the stage, Mark Cavendish, and thereby it meant that Julien Alaphilippe had to settle for second place and the Young Riders classification. The remainder of the season did not yield the big results, but Alaphilippe was picked for the World Championship in Richmond, but nothing really came of it. After tests upon his return to Europe, he was diagnosed with monosclerosis, which led to him ending his season early. In 2016, Alaphilippe opened the season with the Tour de la Province. Still suffering from the illness, he did not complete the race. He returned to form for the Ardennes Classic, where he managed to once again finish second in Flesh Alone, sixth in Amstel Gold. Alaphilippe returned to the Tour of California. He rode very strong on stage three, taking the win in Santa Barbara. In the time trial, he lost 45 seconds to Rowan Dennis, although he was still 16 seconds ahead of the Australian in the overall standings. 
Nevertheless, the French star prevailed in the American race, making history as well as he became the first French winner of the race. It was then a return to the World Tour races with the Criterium du Nofine, where Alaphilippe came in fifth on the opening mountainous prologue. He finished fourth on stage three and finished second on the fourth stage in a sprint and three top 10 finishes in the final few stages. Thus, he was able to win the youth classification as well and place sixth overall, 51 seconds behind the eventual winner, Chris Froome. Although Alaphilippe's first participation in the Tour de France was stated a few weeks earlier, he was included officially in the team's final selection. And at the Tour de France, on the second stage, which began in saint louis Julien Philippe led the sprint, but was caught at the finish line by Peter Scan, who unexpectedly took over the yellow jersey as well. Alaphilippe was dropped in the Pyrenees and was starting to struggle. He did, however, get in a move on the 15th stage and was in contention for the stage win but he was left behind due to a chain break during a descent finishing sixth at the end his last success came on stage 20 where he finished fourth and that meant that he went on to complete his first ever tour de france alaphilippe was selected alongside romain Bardet and warren Barguil for the olympic road race for france alaphilippe just fell outside the medals in fourth place in the race Back in Europe and Alaphilippe was part of the French team competing in Plouet for the inaugural European Road Championships and Alaphilippe here managed to battle his way to a second place behind the eventual winner Peter Sagan. The following year in 2017 he began his season at the Abu Dhabi Tour. He won the best young rider classification and placed fifth. In addition he also won the fourth stage of Paris-Nice which was a hilly time trial. This was both his first win on the world tour circuit and his first time trial win of his career and with this win he managed to wear the leader's jersey which he held for three days until the queen stage of the Col de Quiol where he lost the jersey. At Milan San Remo evidently in great form Alaphilippe was strong and he pursued Peter Scan's charge on the Poggio climb and ultimately it came down to a trio sprinting for the line and here Alaphilippe unfortunately was third in a very tight battle between Sagan and Mikhail Kwiatkowski. It was still a huge result as it was his first monument podium. Due to a knee injury sustained during a fall at the Tour of the Basque Country, Alaphilippe missed the Ardennes Classic that year. After making a comeback to racing, he took part in the Vuelta a Burgos to get ready for the Vuelta a España. At the Vuelta a España, on stage 8, he managed to outkick the likes of Rafa Maika in the fight for the win, and thereby Alaphilippe took his first Grand Tour victory. Alaphilippe didn't do much else in that year's Vuelta a España. He was included in the French squad for the world championships and towards the finish Alaphilippe found himself in a breakaway move with Diana Moscon however the duo despite looking like they could have succeeded were caught by the peloton in the final few throws of the race and he ended up in 10th place nevertheless Alaphilippe continued his momentum at Il Lombardia where he was able to finish second to Vincenzo Nibali and thereby this was his second monument of the season a huge result for the youngster and concluded his season at the Tour of Beijing finishing fourth overall and clinching the white jersey in the process. The 2018 season for Julian Philippe began in South America during their inaugural Colombian tour. He managed to win the fourth stage with a powerful kick and at the end he was seventh overall 50 seconds down on the eventual winner Egan Bernal. A few weeks later at the Abu Dhabi tour, Alaphilippe was strong again and was third on the Queen stage which helped him seal a fourth place overall. Julien Philippe led the Quick Step Floors team at Paris Nice and here he rode well, finishing top 10 on three stages, including third in the time trial in Saint Etienne. But his focus was this year the Ardennes Classics and he used the Tour of Basque Country as preparation. In the race, he attacked alongside Primoz Roglic and managed to outsprit Primoz Roglic to take the win and wear the yellow jersey. And the next day, in front of Primoz Roglic, once again, he managed to outkick the Slovenian and he made it two for two but he lost the jersey on stage four and the last two stages Alaphilippe really cracked but he bounced back at Flesh Vallone where he showed his dominance on the Murawi and managed to win for the first time outright defeating Alejandro Valverde in a very special moment for the rider. At Liege Pastor Liege it wasn't Julian Philippe who took the win but it was his teammate Bob Jungles and Alaphilippe was very strong and finished fourth 
in the race. He continued his season at the Criterium de Neufne where he managed to win the fourth stage by outkicking the likes Garen Thomas and Roman Bardet for the win. He subsequently trailed the leaders in the final three mountain stages and ended up finishing 21st. At the Tour de France, Alaphilippe targeted stage wins and on stage 10, he accomplished his goal when he won up the Grand Bonnard in the Alps after an impressive 30 kilometer solo attack and thereby Alaphilippe also claimed the polka dot jersey. He was not finished however as he won the second stage in Bagnier de Luchon which was held in the Pyrenees as he attempted to hold on to the polka dot jersey. Alaphilippe managed to take the polka dot jersey all the way to the finish and that meant that he got his first taste of a Grand Tour classification. A big result for him and a big result for the team. After the tour he headed to the San Sebastian Classic and here Alaphilippe was in the winning move once again a two-man sprint where he managed to outkick Balka Molema to win the San Sebastian Classic. He continued the momentum into the Tour of Britain where he managed to win on stage three into Bristol and he managed to also finish second of the win latter pass and managed to seal the overall win. His first real big GC stage win. At the Tour of Slovakia, he was in the final selection on the first stage and won the sprint to the finish. And that lead, he managed to defend all the way to the finish and took the overall stage race win. The next goal was the World Championships in Ignisbruck and it seemed like the French team were working for him. But unfortunately, the wheels came off for Alaphilippe despite the strong work being done by the French team. And he was eventually dropped in the crucial moment. And this was, of course, a race that Alejandro Valverde won and Romain Bardet, his teammate, finished second. In the 2019 season, Julien Philippe began the season at the San Juan International race in Argentina and it wasn't long before he tasted success as on stage two, he kicked two kilometers from the finish, taking the win. He followed this up by winning a 12 kilometer time trial the very next day and he hung on on the Alto Colorado, finishing 14th and in the end, he managed to finish second overall. He continued his South American program at the Colombia tour where he won the fifth stage but he was ultimately dropped on the queen stage and finished eighth overall. Back in Europe at Strade Bianchi he was very strong and got in the right move with Jakob Fulsang and Wout van Aert. Alphilippe kicked on the final climb after the gravel sectors and thereby won the Italian classic becoming the first Frenchman to do so. The momentum continued once again and he went on to win stage two of Tirreno Adriatico followed up by taking stage six as well and ultimately he was sixth overall. For La Primavera Milan San Remo he was a favorite and in the race he launched a strong attack on the Poggio filtering the race down to 10 riders. The final three kilometers saw attacks from Nassen, Trentin and Morhich but ultimately it came down to a sprint and Alaphilippe was the strongest and crossed the line first to win Milan San Remo. His first monument of his career and a truly epic moment for the Frenchman. Next up he went to the Tour of the Bats Country yet again where he finished fourth in the first time trial and went on to win the sprint due to his injuries and the stage weather he eventually retired the following day after crashing during the third stage nevertheless he was back at the Ardennes and he was a dominant force as he managed to defeat Jakob Fulsang and Diego Alisi to win Flesh Valone for a second year in a row at Amstel Gold he was also away with Jakob Fulsang but the pair unfortunately weren't able to do much compared to the Macho van der Poel Express that won on the day. Alaphilippe wanted to win Liege Bastien Liege but on the final crime he cracked and he only finished 16th with Jakob Fuglsang taking the win. The cry Tim du Neufne was next on the agenda and here he had a disappointing first few stages however he did finish 7th in the time trial and he finished 3rd in the sprint the following day losing out to Wout Van Aert and Sam Bennett. On the 6th stage he went in a move with Demarki and Mul and as a result he ended up securing his 10th victory of the year. At the Tour de France on the third stage Alaphilippe attacked and soloed to the line winning with a 26 second gap meaning that he overtook Mike Turnison in the yellow jersey and thereby he wore the yellow jersey for the first time in his career. Alaphilippe held it for three days but ultimately lost it to Giulio Ciccone on La Plage de Belfi but that was not it for Alaphilippe and the yellow jersey as he managed to take it back at the end of the eighth stage in Saint Etienne as him and Thibaut Pinot had managed to get up the road in a dynamic duo 
behind Thomas De Gen. Alaphilippe did something absolutely sensational on the time trial into Po. He won the stage on the 100th anniversary of the yellow jersey. The last French rider to win a time trial wearing the yellow jersey was none other than Laurent Fignon in 1984. Alaphilippe lost a little ground to Garen Thomas on the 15th stage, but he still held on to the yellow jersey more than a minute and a half ahead of the Brit. Alaphilippe even had a strong finish on the Tourmalet where he managed to hold his own, only losing out to Thibaut Pinot really. Alaphilippe cracked on stage 19 on the climb up to the Col de Lisera where he saw Egan Bernal dash away and unfortunately the Frenchman could not follow him and the ascent to Val Touren proved to be too much for Alaphilippe the following day as well when he attempted to hold on to second place that was the first occasion that he had had trouble and at the end of the tour he was four minutes and five seconds down behind the eventual winner Egan Bernal but as a consolation prize the race jury gave him the super competitivity award and was the people's champion for that year he finished his season at the GP Quebec and Montreal races where he finished 7th and 13th respectively before finishing 28th in the challenging world championships in Yorkshire. Alaphilippe had a great year and was voted the Ballon d'Or the first for a French rider since 1995 and in 2020 he began in South America again with no great results. He was third on stage four of the Colombian tour before he headed to Paris Nice which ended early because of Covid. After the pause Julian Philippe failed to complete the double in Strade Bianchi and Milan San Remo as he'd done the year before finishing second in the sprint behind Wout Van Aert. and at the Tour de France that year Alaphilippe got himself in the right move on stage two into Nice and won the sprint overtaking the yellow jersey in the process which he managed to hold on for three days before he got a strange penalty that meant he got relegated. The remainder of the tour did not yield the same kind of success for him and later in the season at the World Championships he led the French race in Imola and the French setup was perfect for him as he attacked with a thunderous attack 12 kilometers from the finish and won the race to become the first French rider to win the World Championship road race since Chalabert in 1997 ahead of Wout Bernard. The week after at Liège Pastel Liège wearing his world champions jersey he attacked on the final climb with a group of five who came with him to the finishing line and here Alaphilippe opened up the sprint lifted his arms thinking he had won but saw that Primoz Roglic had passed him on the line leaving him celebrating too early and after the race it was seen that he had impeded other riders race and that meant that he was dropped down in the group to fifth place overall because his line was deemed unusual. Was this this the curse of the rainbow jersey? Who knows? Three days later, he bounced back where he defeated Macho Banapal in a sprint at the Brabantes Pile. And Alaphilippe went on to do his maiden tour of Flanders with a lot of confidence. He had launched several attacks on the Koppenberg and led a successful breakaway with Macho Banapal and Wout Van Aert. Alaphilippe then felt the force again of the curse of the rainbow jersey as he collided with a motorcycle 35 kilometers from the finish, leaving his two breakaway companions to fight it out in Ordenard. This was was very frustrating as he was in great form and in a great position and following the race it was found out that he had two fractures in his right hand and had surgery very quickly as well. In 2021 Alaphilippe began the year at the Tour de la Province and here he was in the pointy end of the race finishing third on the Mont Montmontouf finish and he was ultimately second overall. At Strade Bianchi Alaphilippe found himself in the winning move with Macho Manipal and Egan Bernal but was dropped on the final climb into Siena and that meant that he finished second. Alaphilippe got his revenge however on the Flying Dutchman on stage 2 of Trianu Adriatico where he managed to outsprint him and Wout Van Aert to take the win and this was great preparation for the Ardennes Classics where at Amstel Goal he managed to finish 6th and once again he dropped Primoz Roglic who had attacked a little too early on the murder week to win his third Flesh Vallone title. Four days later he was once again in a winning move this time at Liege Bastan Liege but in the sprint he lost out to Tarabigaccia. So close but still so far away. Prior to the Tour de France he went to the Tour de Suisse and here he was in the top 10 for many stages and he was second even in the time trials. At the Tour de France on the first stage Alaphilippe was perfectly positioned on Devenance's wheel and he launched a decisive attack 2.3 kilometers from the finish on the steepest slope of the climb and he 
he held on to win by himself in Lava Dude, winning in the rainbow jersey, a truly incredible moment for the rider. Sporting the first yellow jersey of the tour, he did however go on to lose the jersey on the very next day to Machu Bunapal, and he soon dropped out of the general classification and went into the breakaways, but ultimately was unsuccessful. After the tour, he finished sixth at the San Sebastian Classic, second in the Britannia Classic, and returned to the Tour of Britain, finishing on the podium. Alaphilippe went to Flanders to defend his world championship, and in the race with 17 kilometers from the finish, he launched an incredible attack after multiple attacks during the day, and fought the chaser's attempt to catch up to him to once again win and take his second title in a row, making him the first Frenchman to win the world championships twice in a row, and additionally, he was the seventh rider to successfully defend his world championships. He concluded his year with a sixth place at Il Lombardia, which was won by Tadab Gacha. The 2022 season began again at the Torlap province, where he was strong and finished second overall, 27 seconds behind the winner of Nairo Quintana, and he finished fifth in the Drome Classic before at Strabianchi. The curse of the rainbow jersey seemed to strike him once again as he suffered a crash caused by gusts of wind that caused another rider to fall. However, despite this crash, Alaphilippe showed the champion he is and still finished the race. Two days later, he lined up at Trainer Argeasco, where he went on several attacks during the race, but without obtaining any notable results. He returned at the Tour of Basque Country to prepare for the Ardennes Classic, where he managed to win the second stage, his first win of the season, and finished second in the next two stages. He went to Flesh Fallon as a three-time champion, but was not able to defend his title as he finished fourth. At liege bastogne liege he was forced to abandon again because of a very heavy fall. At the end of June, he returned to competition at the French National Championships, but he was not selected by Quick Step to take to the start of the Tour de France, which was a first for a world champion since Paolo Bettini in 2008. Alaphilippe made his return to competition during the Tour of Valonia, and here he won during the first stage on the top of the Mur de Huy, but he lost the jersey the very next day and tested positive for COVID-19 and had to leave the race. He again returned in the season at the Vuelta España, where he rode for his teammate Remco Evenepoel. However, Alaphilippe found himself the victim of a crash during the 11th stage and was forced to abandon, suffering from a dislocation of his right shoulder. And he wasn't able to defend his title in Australia, unfortunately finishing 51st. In 2023, there was plenty of criticism by Patrick Lefebvre for the results deemed insufficient in 2022. He started his season at the Mallorca Challenge races and then went to the Drone Classic and even won the 4 Adesh Classic in a sprint ahead of David Goudou. Alaphilippe showed glimpses of his old self as he was second in the fourth stage of the trainer at Jasko behind Primoz Roglic and he went on to finish seventh in Milan San Remo. Not feeling well, he retired from E3 and then crashed during the Tour of Flanders where he ended up finishing 51st. He returned to Liège Bastogne Liège and worked as a domestique for Remco Venable who ended up winning the race. Alaphilippe resumed his year at Grand Team du Dauphiné where he managed to win on the second stage in a sprint and then took second place on the fifth stage. He was also in the breakaway on the final stage but was not able to hang on to the eventual stage winner of Giulio Ciccone. Alaphilippe was able to cling on to a 10th place overall. At the Tour de France he was involved in plenty of breakaways but nothing came of it and the last few high points of his year was 9th in GP Quebec and 8th in the Copa Bernocchi as his real big results. So what happened to Julien Philippe? The French rider once hailed as one of the most exciting talents in the sport has experienced a roller coaster journey that took him from the pinnacle of the sport as world champion to moments of obscurity. His rise to fame was marked by audacious attacks, thrilling victories, capturing the hearts of fans worldwide. However, as the expectation grew, the pressure mounted, Alaphilippe's path became increasingly tumultuous, filled with injuries, setbacks, and the relentless pursuit of excellence. Yet his story will not be remembered as another case study for the curse of the rainbow jersey. It will be a tale of the enduring spirit of resilience, a testament to the indomitable will of a true champion, and not only that, a double world champion. That's basically it for this video. Make sure to comment down below what you think of Julian Philippe as a rider. And if you have not already, why not check out some of our other WTF videos such as Marcel Kittle or Andy Slay. But as always, thank you for watching and have a nice day.